에이 다른 사람들은 전부 다 같이 떨어지는 데에 집착해 내 몸을 그리 고민해 내가 볼 때. Let me take a minute to address the elephant in the room. Um, I'm in the middle of redoing my hair, like touching it up because the sides were not matching the top of my head, obviously, and the gray was going really weird. So this is just temporary, so don't worry. I know there's some people that get anal about my hair when they should be checking their own hair. Just kidding. A lot of people ask me when Fenty Beauty came out. A lot of people are like, "Oh my God, are you gonna redo? Are you gonna do it?" But we don't have Sephora. In Korea, and I know I use some stuff from Sephora, but that's because I get it when I'm in America. I'm obviously not in America, so I didn't get it. But uh, my friend Song Min Hyung, he happened to be in Thailand, I believe, and he went to Sephora there and he picked up the fancy stuff. He's like, "Oh, you know, I have it, and uh, we happen to be the same um, foundation shade." So he's like, "Oh, I got like pretty much everything, save for a few things, and I'll you know lend them to you." And so. Um, this is gonna be more like a first impression. I prefer to really review things, like really try them out and test them for at least a week, um, so that I know how I feel about them. But this one, I wasn't really into trying it anyway, uh, because it's not K Beauty exactly. But I know there were quite a few people that wanted me to try and they were curious about my opinions. But just so that you know, this is gonna be like a first impression. I think the main thing, other than the fact that this is a line by Rihanna herself, the queen. I like Ariana Grande, but whatever. <laughs> I think the main like selling point was the fact that there were like 40 foundation shades and it's not just that there are like 40 shades that happen to be like light to medium there are a, quite a number of like deep shades as well and apparently they're adding like 40 more shades which i think is like you know it's a lot but i to each their own but i think it's great that uh, more people have access to foundation shades because especially on the deeper spec end of the spectrum it can be quite difficult especially because if especially if you're watching this channel it's a k-beauty channel K-beauty, you know, Korean beauty products tend to be on like, because they're marketing towards Koreans, right? And most of them tend to be on like the lighter end of the spectrum. So that's just the case. So it's great that you can walk into Sephora and, you know, there'll be a foundation line that will probably have a foundation shade for you. But I will say just because, you know, oh, you can find your foundation shade in this line does not make it immune to criticism. So if I don't like it, I don't like it. I know there are a lot of people that love it, um, but my friend Sungwin hates it. So um, I just think it depends on like the skin type that you have. That's really what it comes down to. So yeah, you'll find maybe find a foundation shade for you in this line, but um, the possibility of it not working well for your skin type is also is a thing. So you know that's something to keep in mind. I did try this stuff on my hand, and I've heard, I have seen a few videos about it on the internet, and I did take a look at the ingredients a little bit, um, and also from the account of my friend, it seems to be aimed mainly towards oily skins. I think. Um, or normal-ish skins. It doesn't seem to be a line of, um, well, specifically like the base stuff. It's really only base stuff for now. Uh, but it seems to be not very friendly with dry skin because there's a lot of silicone in it. And from my experience, even though I have oily skin, my skin doesn't take well to too much silicone because it will, like, it will just make it look worse because I have like a lot of acne scarring. Like, it just doesn't work well with my skin. So even though I have oily skin, too much silicone is not necessarily a good thing for my skin type, but we'll see. We'll see. So all I have is just uh, my skincare on. I have most of the things, um, so we'll just go through and uh, try each one. First of all, I'm going to be doing the primer and foundation first, so um, to apply it, I'm going to try this. What is this? The Precision Makeup Sponge. Um, I actually did wet it already, but to be honest, this is not that much smaller or bigger than when it's dry. Honestly, it's really, really uh, squishy. The texture is, oh, I would say almost even squishier than the Beauty Blender itself. It's really, like, it gives way a lot. Even when it's dry, it's just as, like, squishy. I think on one side, I'm going to try applying with this sponge. But on the other side, I'm going to use this Espar silicone sponge that I've been super, super into. This works really well for matte foundation formulas and also things that are on the like slightly thicker side. This foundation isn't necessarily thick, it's just that it's more matte, so I think it'll work perfect for this. And also the like, the matte, what is this called? The, yeah, the matte stick. I think it'll work really well. So, um, let me start with the primer. This is the um, Pro Filter Instant Retouch Primer. It claims to have a smooth pore diffusing finish and it's supposed to extend makeup wear, like most found our primers tend to claim. I don't feel like, I feel like I don't have to talk too much about this stuff because I feel like everyone knows. Like, I feel like there's just so many videos about it anyway that most people probably already know like the basic gist of each product. Here's the texture. It's more on like the jelly, jelly. It almost has like a gel like finish to it because it's not, I was expecting it to be more like a um, really matte, really slippery silicone type of uh, primer, but it's more of like a gel type moisturizer kind of feeling, almost like a thicker lotion. 
with like a gel finish. And it seems that as it dries down, it becomes more soft and matte. So on this side, I'm gonna apply. You know what? You probably should just apply this with your fingers. I felt like the sponge just ate that shit right up. It does feel though like one of those primers that you can probably use all over your face. Because there are some primers that are more so pore filling because they're that slippery kind of silicone texture. So they're more suited to just putting it in areas where you're just trying to fill in pores. But this feels like something you can put all over your face. And it did kind of mattify my, like you can see a little bit of sheen from my skincare. It did matte it down just a tiny bit, like a tiny, tiny bit. And on this side, I'm using my Espar sponge. I've been freaking obsessed with this sponge lately. I've been even putting my skincare on with it. It doesn't necessarily make it quicker to apply skincare, but I don't know. I've been really into it. Yeah, just feels the same, both sides. So this is definitely a primer I can get down with because I tend to stray away from primers only because I feel like they make my foundation actually like not last as long, especially the really silicone-y primers. Uh, but this one feels more like a skincare type of primer. Wouldn't say that there's actual skincare ingredients in it, but it's more of like a moisturizer kind of primer. But that doesn't mean I'm gonna replace my moisturizer with it. Um, it's just, it's a texture of primer that I prefer. All right, next we've got the uh, Pro Filter Soft Matte Longwear Foundation. By the way, I freaking love the packaging. It's really like chic, very urban, very modern. The shade that I have is number 210. As in blending out, I can really tell it's one of those foundations that um, has quite a bit of silicone in it. And just blending out my hand, I can tell this is, like it says, a soft has a soft matte finish. Just seeing the reviews, it seems like everyone agrees that not necessarily a oxidation, but when it dries down, which is like when it sets, it tends to set lighter than, or darker, I'm sorry, than how it looks like in the bottle when you first pump it out. So there is a chance that this will look like not the right shade. Hopefully it will come out looking right. Looking right and tight. It's not too pink. Um, I would say it's more neutral. It's like a creamy beige. And I heard that you need to work very quickly because this shit will like set super quickly. Cause my friend, what he did was he like dotted all over his face. And when he went to go blend in with the sponge, the first area that he applied the foundation, Apparently it already set in like it was, where the dots were it was hard for it to budge, but so far I'm getting like Medium light medium coverage. It claims to be medium to full uh, But it, re it really does seem like a foundation you can build up. Does it have SPF? I don't think it has SPF. Yeah, this seems to be free of um, SPF, which is good for um, Photography um, and also really good for when you're getting into the much deeper skin tones um, it's important that there are a lot, most foundations these days have SPF, but as you're getting to the deeper skin tones, it's important that you take out that, um, or it's important for companies to take out the SPF. Otherwise, it can look like gray or white cast on darker skins. But in my opinion, you're supposed to already be wearing SPF separately anyway, so I don't think that matters. I don't think that matters too much. Um, so this makes it a good foundation for photography and video and all that. As you guys know, I have like five lights on me right now. Um, like in front of my face and that tends to catch the SPF really easily. But first impressions, uh, when I was blending I was like, uh, the, the coverage is like lightish to medium, but as it's setting it's almost like it's solidifying and it's the, the coverage is getting a little bit higher. I'd say it's like a medium but more on like the light side. Apparently you can build this up easily, so we'll see. I will say though it's really uh, softening the look of my pores. You can see I do have like acne scarring. But other than that, it's smoothing them out a little bit. The color is a, like a tad bit um, warmer than my natural skin tone that you can see right here. But it's nothing, you know, I can just put like a slightly lighter concealer around here and I think it will look perfect. But so far the color matches, it's, it's pretty close, it's pretty close. I know there are a lot of people out there that get on me for like, oh your foundation is always too light, but on me, I almost, I would obviously not like a foundation that's like 30 shades lighter than me, but, but a shade that's maybe like a half step lighter for me, I prefer because it all, I don't know what it is, but to, for me personally, I almost feel like if it's um, half a shade deeper, it has to be either the right shade or a tiny bit lighter. If it's any deeper, it almost makes my face look more tired, I think. And it almost makes my, um what is it, my scarring look a little worse. But the same can also be said if it's like way too light. So I do have to get that uh, match. 
So if I'm using this foundation, I would definitely put like a lighter concealer in the middle. Um, now I'm gonna use my S bar sponge on this side. This sponge really pushes foundation into the pores. It just makes like every foundation look so much better, even more so than like a beauty blender. But already, <laughs> I prefer this side much more than the sponge side. Oh lord, do you see this? It's starting to like pill and um, lift. You can just pat it out. So yeah, I think you can tell that this foundation sets super quickly. Also with this sponge you can get away with way less product. Oh and also with this sponge, because it pushes all the foundation into the skin and pores, it makes foundation last so much longer. Because with any other tool, it almost, it blends the product out, but it's almost like it just sits on top of the skin. So um, if oil comes up or just the day the time passes by, it will slowly like break apart or like like it will just come off the skin. But with this sponge, it like literally pushes it into the skin and it causes it to last so much longer. It's like the same feeling I had when I discovered the Beauty Blender. I'm like, oh my God, why am I trying this just now? That's how I feel about the sponge. Yeah, you can definitely see like the color difference, like here and here are my natural skin tone. You can see like this bit of yellow here. But once again, I have no problem with fixing it with a concealer. The matchstick that I have in here is a little bit lighter, like a, a smudge bit lighter than this foundation. So we'll see if we can correct that, I guess. And also cover my dark circles because my dark circles are still there. Like the, the foundation, I don't really count on my foundation to cover my dark circles. I always use a separate concealer anyway, so that doesn't really matter. All right, so there it is all over my face. Mm, it's looking quite yellow on camera. So having used this foundation on my face and you know, testing on my hand and all that, definitely can tell this, if you have dry skin, I would avoid this foundation. Um, or if you really do want to try it, use like a damp sponge or like a cushion puff even, um, because I feel like using a brush and like brushing it into the skin will not only like lift it off your skin, oh well, not lift it, but it will not only cause it to like pill on your skin, but it will also cause it to like lift any dead skin because it will grab onto the dead skin on your skin and it will, you're just gonna buff it off and it will exfoliate your skin basically. I don't need, I wouldn't powder this at all. I think this would be great. I, I like this side so much better. With that sponge, it really almost, it gives, like do you see it like right here? Did you see right here? It's almost like my pores disappeared. Well here, although it looks more natural, I guess. Like they both look fine, but this side looks more perfected, I think. And that definitely has to do with the sponge. But with this sponge, this is like the perfect formula for that. And also if you're working to build up the coverage, I don't think a brush would really be nice or help because you're, again, you're kind of rubbing off that layer that was already set using a sponge whether it be a beauty blender or something like a silicone sponge like this, it will, you can kind of pat it onto that existing layer so that you're not rubbing it off. Yep, this is a really matte foundation. It's very matte, very matte. I'm gonna put on my eyebrows real quick and I'll be right back. Okay, so let's move on to the match sticks. My friend got this in the, in a set. This is what he got, he got medium 200. You're supposed to be able to conceal, contour, and highlight with this. One of the selling points is that it's magnetized. So if you have a bunch of them, you can stick them all together and the magnet is actually pretty like it doesn't feel cheap it's really strong i think the whole aesthetic of fenty beauty is amazing i love the whole like kind of nude beigey creamy like aesthetic that they're going for let me do the concealer first i don't want to say this is too much lighter let me, let me see it side by side this is oh well, you can see that right there it's like already darker it's lighter so i think we can kind of highlight the middle of my face a little bit so I was trying this on my hand earlier and I know the first thing that I definitely noticed, the formula is really thick, but on my hand, it blended really well into like the lines of my hand and it didn't like do, do that weird thing that really creamy uh, stick type products tend to do is where they get, they like stick in the lines rather than like blend well into the lines. I don't think this do, would do that well though for people like me that have like wrinkles under their eyes. You can definitely see though that it, like, it looks quite thick and a little bit dry. So um, this whole line in general, I feel like would appeal a lot to people that have really good skin already. Or not, not necessarily good skin, but like smooth skin. If you have texture, I don't know if you would like this. It's all right. I didn't really conceal my dark circles. 
it's still kind of gray under there. But it did kind of make this side of my face more uniform. The reason I didn't use this sponge on this side is just because I feel like it isn't, I don't know, like I prefer to push the product into the skin rather than just blend it on top of my skin. But I know people are going to want to see me try this sponge, so I guess I'll just put a sponge on this side. Although you can get into the corner of the eye with this end of the sponge, like I feel like the sponge is just too flimsy to really blend out. Not just blend it, but like push it into the skin. I keep saying push it into the skin, but it's really important for people that want to have their makeup last long. You know what? I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of liking the side with the sponge, you know, now that I'm looking at it. But the difference isn't that big. Like the difference is so small that I would still probably just use this only because I won't have, if I use this, then I have to wash it. I have to add, I have to put water in it and make it moist, not moist, but wet. Um, but I actually did hear that you get more coverage out of this if you use it dry. But it's not dry, obviously, because it was already wet, sorry. No, I mean, I could put it down my nose, and, like on my chin. Like, it, it's like really starting to look dry. I'm not really surprised because I expected this to happen. But this really isn't my favorite type of formula. Although I have oily skin, I do kind of use my chin as like a reference point for dry skin because my chin is quite dry after I have gotten after I had gotten my uh, chin fillers. So if you are a dry skin person, but you really want to try this, you really need to make sure your skin is well exfoliated and well moisturized because it's not gonna look cute. Okay, I had to pat under my eyes because it was starting to crease under my eyes in the fine lines. Which, not surprised because these these formulas together are kind of thick. So that plus like the silicone basis to them really. I don't know, it just, it, I think it's it suit people with smooth skin, don't really have fine lines or wrinkles. Just skin that isn't that problematic. I know there is a powder, like a blotting powder, but uh, my friend didn't get it because he actually has dry skin, so for him he didn't feel like he needed to get it. I heard that it's not necessary for setting the foundation, but it's more for, um, like the name suggests, blotting for if your skin gets oily because apparently you're supposed to be able to just go away, get away with this finish without having to set it, which I agree with. If I didn't have like, I'll probably set under my eyes anyway, uh, but for the rest of my face, I feel like it's totally fine. All right, now I'm gonna try the matchstick in Mocha. This is supposed to be like a contour shade. It's quite, it almost reminds me almost of like Benefit's Hula Bronzer. At, on first especially, I thought it would be too warm, but looking at it now, I think you could probably get away with it using, it's almost like you can use it as like a contour shade maybe. Mm, I don't know if it's because of my hair color, but it is looking a little bit warm on my skin tone. This is definitely a shade I would use though for warming up the, the sides of my face. Especially if the foundation I'm using that day is too light for me. So although it's not my favorite color for contouring, I don't really use cre things like this, like cream stuff. Like cream contour, I don't necessarily use it for contouring anyway. I use it more so to add dimension to the outer corner, which is, <laughs> that is contouring, but I don't really see it as like, oh, I'm trying to contour my face. I'm trying more like adding warmth. So that blended out to a really pretty, um, kind of like halo of like warmth around the face. I'm going to contour my nose just a little bit. I'm going to tap using a shadow brush on the sides of my nose. I think rubbing in the contour with a brush is going to cause the foundation to lift really easily, especially on my nose. So I'm just going to tap it in. Mmm, that's a little bit too warm for contouring the nose. Yeah, not too bad, but uh, I would just I would just use it on the outer part of my face. And then I would use like a more gray contour for my nose. Now what I'm the most excited for from this little trio is Trippin. This is like basically a cream version of MAC Soft and Gentle. It also kind of gives me uh, NARS orgasm vibes. Oh, that is fucking gorgeous. It's like a peachy, apricot-y um, like color, like a base. But when you shift it, it's like a really high shine yellowish gold. So I think it's really freaking pretty. I'll see if it will if it will if it will work with my silicone sponge. I really like this actually. I actually also really like this for the ColourPop formulation. I was always confused as to which brush or thing or I should use for when I'm applying my ColourPop highlighters or blush. Um, with brushes, it just didn't seem to pick up the product. With sponge, it I don't, I don't know, I just didn't like it, so um, I like the way it applies with sponge, so... I mean, this I'm not saying this is similar to the color problem, but anyway. 
It's not really playing it the way I want it. It's kind of rubbing the foundation around. This is definitely more of a... I don't know if I would put this like all over like a highlight highlight. I would use it more like... Oh god, this formula... Oops, my camera died. Uh, I don't really like the formula of this. It's too hard and dry to like... Well, one, it'll pick up on your finger, but as you're tapping it in, you kind of really have to like build it up. Do, you cannot rub it or else it will move everything under it. Like around. It does leave like a pretty like... Oh, that's actually really cute. It's adorable. Okay, so I like the color and I like the, you know, you can, I can build it up, but I'm not, I wouldn't say it's my favorite formula. Um, it's a little too dry for me. It's really subtle, really, really subtle. Which is, you know, some people like, some people prefer stronger blushes, so it just depends on what you like. But I can, this would be a really pretty color actually on um, medium to deeper skin tones or even paler skin tones. Like, this is a really pretty color. So again, a little finicky with the application. You don't want to rub too much. It is a little annoying that you have to like really rub into it with your finger and apply it with your finger and you have to build up the color slowly. But I think the overall product is quite nice. I was watching Stephanie Nicole's video and she was saying how with the foundation from far away, it looks nice, but I can definitely see how she was saying up close, like super up close, it like looks like makeup. I feel like the more as time passes by, it's starting to really settle into the skin so it's looking more okay. But I think that you have to really make sure your skincare um, is on point or you're really taking good care that you have no like dry patches because this is, it's getting to that point where it's building up to look very makeup, not necessarily cakey, but like it looks like makeup on the skin. So I added a little bit of eyeshadow. I used the Stila palette that I also <laughs> borrowed from Sing Min Young. But I think the way this purpley, bluey eyeshadow looks with um, this color is really pretty. Gorgeous. Not a fan of the formula, but the color, A+. All right, so the matchsticks, um, the formula really thick and silicone-y. So you do, again, one, have your skin exfoliated. Two, make sure your skin is well moisturized. Three, um, I would avoid it if you have a lot of textural issues, wrinkles, bumpiness on the skin, things like that. Otherwise, I think you might be able to get away with um, smoothing it out with like an HD powder. That way it's almost like, you know when you have like a, uh, when you're doing your nails and it looks a little bit rough after maybe you're doing all this nail art or you have several layers, you kind of smooth it out with like a top coat. Kind of the same thing with this. I think if you use like an HD powder, which I'll try at the end so that we'll see what it looks like. I think it will definitely smooth everything out. My skin has a lot of like bumpiness from acne scarring. So this isn't exactly helping that, but I think an HD powder, like if I was just using this, if I wasn't testing in front of the camera, and all that, I would I would go in with like a um, HD powder anyway. So the matchsticks, they're they're all right. The my favorite was definitely tripping though, as like a blush color and kind of. Oh. Anyway, moving on, I've got the Kilowatt Freestyle Highlighter Duo. This is in Girl Next Door and Chic Freak. Now my friend Sungmin hated this, and I can see why. And it's actually for the same reason uh, that he didn't like. Trophy Wife, which this is the one that everyone's fucking excited for. Um, I will say the packaging is gorgeous on this. I don't know if you can see that, but it's like white, but in the light it shifts to like a purpley chromey. You probably can't see that. Really, really pretty colors. Um, Girl Next Door almost looks like it would give you the look of like wet cheeks if you apply it on. And this is almost similar to Trippin in like the shade that it's in. Now the issue that we both found with this is that we swatch it with our fingers and we're like, oh my god, the color's so pretty. But when you actually go into blend or use a, like I assume most people use a brush to apply these, it's mostly the glitter and the sparkle and shimmer that come off on the skin rather than an actual like color. Now it is a highlighter for a reason, so isn't that like I'm assuming I guess that's what it's for. But uh, let's let's try putting it on with a brush. I'm gonna use this brush right here. I'm gonna put I'm gonna dip into Girl Next Door. Now, I will say, uh, before I do any powder, contouring, highlighting, or blush or whatever, I always have my skin powdered first. So I don't know if this is going to look cute. Especially because there's no powder under this. And I was right. It's lifting the foundation. All Everything underneath basically is lifting. And it's actually almost, it's almost mattifying that glow that I had. I'm going to try Chic Freak. 
yeah, it's like... No, I would say even like the matchstick has more of a glow than this. Like, I mean, there is... Can you... I don't know. I don't like this. At all. Mm -mm, no. You could probably use this as well as like a highlightery blush if you use your finger and kind of smooth it on to um, just the foundation. If you have anything like these matchsticks on top, you, you'll move it around. I can really only see that working on people with really good skin. Or if you had already set the foundation, I think th it would have glided on easier. But right now, I prefer the matchstick. All right, next up is Trophy Wife. The shit that everyone is like shitting their pants over. When I first saw this, I immediately thought that is not for me. It's pretty, but it's not for me. It's a really yellow gold. It has a kind of like a green undertone to it. Formula itself is really smooth, but it's just way too yellow gold for me to use it on my skin. Even if I were to use it like, oh, light handed, it still would stick out way too much for my natural skin tone. It would come off a little muddy looking. Um, on my particular skin tone, I think it would work much better on people with deeper skin tones, but I think this would work much better as like an eyeshadow. I don't think this would match my eye makeup that I have on right now at all. Let's try it anyway. Can you even see it? Oh shit. Yeah, that is really strong. Okay. All right, you know what? I just fucked up my makeup. So really the only people I would recommend this one in particular to, unless, I mean, you, if you really want it, get it. It's whatever, you can see your, your money. But definitely people that have skin tones that can take a color as strong as this. And also only if your skin is super smooth, unlike mine. This has such strong, like, like it looks almost like glitter on the skin. So it's definitely gonna pick up on um, textural issues on the face. It's not gonna look cute on people that have like acne scarring like me or like just lots of things going on on the cheek. So if you really want this, but you have that kind of textural issue, I would use it as eyeshadow. It looks so pretty as eyeshadow. But other than that, um, yeah, I, I'm not a very big fan of this color. What I am excited for though is the Gloss Bomb Universal Lip Luminizer in Fenty Glow. This stuff, when I saw the reviews, you know, of people trying these out for the first time, this is what I was most excited for. It's not exactly like a unique product, but um, I love the color that it is. It's like a really soft, it's like a nude gloss basically, but it's supposed to be like a universal shade for any skin tone. And I've been really into like these sort of like deep nudes lately. It almost has like a brown, it's like a nude, it's like a brownie pink nude lipstick, but like in a gloss form. I did hear, oh God. I did hear from several people that it's, re it's really sticky. But you know what? Oh lord, that is fucking sticky. But you know what? Good for people like me that have dry ass fucking like puckered asshole lips. All right, I tried to take off the um, trophy wipe from the inner corner and replace it with a different highlight uh, color. But uh, this is the finished look. So I went into this review kind of knowing how I would feel about the product, and it pretty much went exactly like I thought it would. Other than the, um, actually no, I was uh, everything I was kind of unsurprised by. My overall thoughts on what I have right now, definitely a brand geared more towards people with normal to oily skin. People with dry skin will probably find a hard, will have a hard time getting the products to look really natural on the skin because altogether, using all these products together, um, which most of them are base products, it kind of looks very makeup-y on the skin. From far away, it totally looks like fine. It's like really natural and pretty, but up close, it definitely like, it accentuates like skin textural issues, especially with um, so many of the products being like highlight types of products. Um, a lot of the highlighter stuff have like a lot of really heavy shimmer, not like glitter exactly, but like it's shimmer borderline turning into glitter because it, there's so much of it and like, the textures, like it's just not friendly for people with skin like mine. But I have to say, if you have smooth skin, I would like have a, an amazing time with this shit because people with smooth skin can take all that like, um, all the shimmering glitter and all that without it looking too, like too much on the skin. The primer, I really like the primer because it's the type of primer that I would be more geared towards. It's not silicone-y really, it feels more like a lotion and it gives you like the soft smooth finish without it feeling like it's gonna like lift the foundation, like it doesn't feel like it's gonna make the foundation 
uh, last words. It feels like it will help it. The foundation is okay. I'm um, using the, the sponge. It, you know, it comes out looking really pretty. You do have to build it up a little bit though if you want to get like more coverage. But um, for like light to medium, I think it's perfect. I do actually prefer it with the sponge, but you do have to work extremely quickly because this can happen right here. I was saying that that sponge helps push it into the skin, but I think um, I was too late in blending it here. And so it had already set. So I think next time I would definitely like work it in much quicker, patting, swiping and all that. But with this, the job is much easier. It's going to give you more of like a natural-ish. You can still get a natural finish with the silicone sponge, but this is a little bit more for forgiving because it does suck up some of that product. The sponge I don't think is completely necessary, especially if you already have a beauty blender. Um, but it, it's cute, I guess. It is kind of expensive. I think it's like $20. But even then, you can use like a Daiso Puff or uh, lots of like cheaper alternatives come out these days that are just as good. Like the Real Techniques one is, I feel like it's just as good as this. But the foundation definitely more for oily skin. If you have dry skin, it's gonna, it's gonna accentuate all the dry patches in your face. The matchsticks as well, I think, are nice if you blend them out properly. The shade Bamboo, which is like it's like the concealer color, I did put kind of here in this area, which. I think it definitely helped the foundation look much better on my skin tone because the foundation, now that like having put everything on, it looks totally fine, but the foundation alone was looking too yellow. So I think it helped lift it up a little bit like the shade and brighten up my face a tiny bit. It doesn't look like, like the white under eye. So I think that's good. Mocha I think is gorgeous on like the outside of the face. Um, so that would be a color I would definitely reach for. Trippin, I freaking, like this whole set, I think because of Mocha and Trippin, I like this set. Bamboo I could do without, but Trippin, especially really like this is a really pretty like blush highlight color i would like more so than this powder highlight i'm going to talk about next i think tripping is like i would reach for that all the time i do wish it wasn't as dry though it, i wish it was a little bit more creamy especially because it's winter now in korea and it's gonna get drier from here on out um so i wish it was a little bit more creamy in texture but um, it's fine. I just have to make sure my skin is well moisturized. And I think if I use it with a different foundation and primer, I think it would look much better. Oh yeah, let me try setting. Let me try setting this because I said earlier that um, it does kind of exasperate textural issues. That looks so much better. The texture of those matchsticks is really thick in silicone, so it was making my textures look worse. So if you want to try the matchsticks, but you have the same issues as I do, I would definitely go in with like a powder to kind of smooth everything out. Not really a fan of the Kilowatt highlighter because there's not enough like color pigment um, in there, which isn't really super, super important because you are really like, you go, you're, it's more so for the glow, I suppose. But if you're going to have two colors in there, I'm assuming you're going to want some level of color payoff because if they're both going to look the same on the skin, like what's the point of having two different colors? if you're only going to be left with just like glitter on your face. The formula in the pan is super hard. So it's really, even with my finger, I felt like I was like digging in there. I don't know, I think I would skip on this whether you have dry skin or not. Trophy Wife I think is really good if your skin is on the deeper end of the scale, if you're, you know, on the other, on the opposite side, I would use it more so like a eyeshadow or something. Um, but definitely would avoid this if you have once again, texture problems. Definitely a line catered more towards smooth skinned individuals. Because I think you can you, know, you can wear this like if you want, you can like make a statement, but the color is so out there for a highlighter that it can look like it's kind of just sitting on top of the face. The gloss, I really like the way the gloss looks on the lips. Like it doesn't, it just looks like a gloss. Like there's not much, like it's pretty close to my, my if there is a color, it's close to my natural lip color anyway. But, um. I just had to make sure I do like the lip trick thing because it was looking really sticky and like gloopy and gloppy. And I think I'm just like repeating myself at this point, but I think you guys understand like what I'm trying to get out. If you have oily skin and your skin is smooth, um, not too many things happening here on the face, I think you really like this line. Um, everyone else, I think you'll be okay with like maybe the foundation and primer and stuff. But if you have dry skin, heed with caution, heed with caution. But I think with all the foundation shades, it's going to be appealing to a lot of people. Just, if I were you, I would definitely get, because it's Sephora, so you can get testers. So I would definitely get samples before you go out and spend your money on it, because it's not cheap. But yeah, I'm happy with how it looks at the end, having added that powder. Yeah, I think I'm done here. I need to edit this. This is a long ass fucking video. Anyway, um, I hope you guys found that interesting or whatever. Um, then I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.
We 